Okay, so in this video we're going to look at maybe the most important lemma for determining if cosets are the same. So let's look at the setup. So let's let G be any group and H be any subgroup of that group G and then G1 and G2 are any elements from the group G. Then the following five statements are equivalent. So the coset with representative G1 is equal to the left coset with representative G2. In other words, G1H is G2H. The right coset with representative G1 inverse is the same thing as the right coset with representative G2 inverse. So HG1 inverse is the same thing as HG2 inverse. The coset G1H is a subset of the coset G2H. So that's actually pretty interesting that the fact that the, this one is a subset of the other implies that they are the same. And then next uh, is that G2 is an element of G1. And then next is that G2 is an element of the coset G1H. And then finally we have G1 inverse times G2 is an element from H. Okay, so let's look at the proof. So uh, we're going to do this kind of in a circle method. So we'll do 1 to 2, 2 to 3, 3 to 4, 4 to 5, and then 5 back to 1. But we might leave some of those off for exercises. Okay, so let's do 1 to 2. In other words, what we want to do is suppose that these two cosets are the same. So G1H equals G2H. And then from this, we want to show that H G1 inverse equals H G2 inverse. So remember, those are cosets, so we'll do that by set inclusion. So let's take an X in H G1 inverse. And what we want to show is that X is in um, H G2 inverse. And we can do that um, in the following way. So if X is an HG1 inverse, that means X can be written as little h times G1 inverse for some little h in our subgroup. Okay, good. But now the next thing that we can do is notice that this means X inverse is equal to G1 H inverse. And that's by the shoes and socks theorem, so we reverse the order and take their inverses using the fact that the inverse of an inverse is itself. But now notice H inverse is an H, so what that means is that this is in the coset G1H. Great. But by our assumption, the coset G1H is the same thing as the coset G2H. Great. So look at what we've got here. We've got X inverse is in the coset G2H. So now what we can do here is write X inverse as G2 times H. Maybe we'll say hat. Great. And that's for some H hat in H. That's what it means to be in that left coset. Now we can take the inverse of both sides and notice that's going to give us X equals H hat inverse times G2 inverse. But notice that's equal to an element from H times G2 inverse. So that's in fact inside H G2 inverse. Okay, great. So we started with this statement right here. X was in the right coset, H, G1 inverse. And we ended up with this statement right here. X is in the coset, H, G2 inverse. So that gives us the set inclusion. H, G1 inverse is contained in H, G2 inverse. Great. And then, well, it's actually pretty much the same thing, so I think it's a good exercise for you to check yourself that you can follow the same strategy to show that H G2 inverse is a subset of H G1 inverse. And then by double set inclusion, that shows that the, those two right cosets are the same. So HG1 inverse equals HG2 inverse, which that finishes the proof um, from 1 to 2.
Okay, I'll clean up the board and then we'll look at the next part. Okay, so next we'll look at two to three. In other words, we're going to assume a statement two is true and prove that that means statement three is true. So let's suppose that we know HG1 inverse equals HG2 two inverse, and what we want to do is take an x from G1H and show that that x has to be in G2H. So in other words, that would show that G1H is a subset of G2H. So let's take an x in G1H. And now we're going to follow a similar strategy that we did before. In other words, push everything to elements instead of cosets and do the calculations there. So what th that tells us is that x can be written as g1 times little h for some little h in big H. Great, now let's invert some things. So notice that means x inverse equals uh, h inverse times g1 inverse just by using shoes and socks theorem again. But notice this is an element from H times G1 inverse. So that means that's in the right coset, H G1 inverse. But our assumption is that that is exactly equal to H G2 inverse. Okay, good. And now we're going to do essentially the same thing that we did before. We have X is in H G2 inverse. So that means, sorry, X inverse. So that means we can write X inverse as H hat times G2 inverse for some H hat in H. Now we can apply the inverse again. So that's going to give us X is equal to G2 times H hat inverse. But that's G2 times an element from H, which tells you that that's in the coset G2H. Okay, so now let's see what we have at the very beginning. We assumed that X was in the coset G1H, and we ended up with X is in the coset G2H. So what that means is that G1H is a subset of G2H, which that's exactly what we wanted to show for three. Okay, good. So I'll clean up the board, and then we'll move on to the next part. Okay, so next we want to assume number three is true and show that number four is true. So let's recall number three is that the coset G1H is a subset of the coset G2H. And number four says that G1 as an element is contained in the coset G2H. So let's see number three. So number three says that uh, for all x in G1H, uh, we have x is in G2H. So that's the element way of writing that G1H is a subset of G2H. Great. Now the next thing that we can notice is that G1 is equal to G1 times the identity but the identity is an element from H because H is a subgroup. So that means that is in fact in the coset G1H. Good. But we assumed that the coset G1H was a subset of the coset G2H. That was one of our assumptions. So we're actually done here. We have the extreme left-hand side of this equation. G1 um, is an element of G2H, exactly as we needed. Okay, good. So now since we've got room on the board, um, let's look at 4 implies 5. So we want to start with 4, which says that G1 is an element of G2H, and then show that G1 inverse G2 is an element from H. So uh, let's do that. So let's suppose that G1 is an element of G2H. So what that tells us is that G1 equals G2 times little h for some H in H. That's what it means to be in that coset. But now we want to construct this term G1 inverse G2. And so that's actually not too bad. 
Notice that we can maybe multiply both sides of the equation on the left by G1 inverse, and that's going to give us the identity equals G1 inverse G2 times H. Now that might not seem that helpful, but now let's right multiply by H inverse, and that's going to give us H inverse equals G1 inverse G2. Now I'm going to rewrite that a little bit. So we have G1 inverse G2 equals H inverse, but now remember that H was an element from our subgroup H, which means H inverse is also an element from that subgroup. So that means that is in H. But now look at this. We have G1 inverse G2 is an element from H. Okay, good. So I'm going to stop the video there. I will say that all that is left to show is that number five implies number one, and that will finish it off. But I think that's best left for an exercise.